What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Go Pony. I do new car track SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, wanted to do the classic comparison 2023 Honda Civic versus 2023 Toyota Corolla. And so I've done this comparison for a few years now and everyone seems to like it. I like it as well. So I have driven and reviewed both the 2023 Civic and 2023 Corolla. And there are many similarities between these two. So that's why probably it's a popular comparison. But in today's video, we are going to be highlighting the 10 key differences between the Civic and Corolla with a clear winner at the end, starting from number 10, working our way to number one. So ultimately, hopefully this video does help you make a better decision on what is right for you. And keep in mind at the very end, like I said, there's going to be a clear winner, but that may not be the clear winner for you because there may be certain things that you are looking for. So ultimately, always do your own research and make your own decision. But having said that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it with number 10 on my list. So for the number 10 comparison, we will take a look at the price comparison between these two. The Honda Civic LX, being the base trim, is going to start at $23,750, whereas the 2023 Corolla LE, again, the base trim for the Corolla, is going to start at $21,550. So a little over $2,000 less for the Corolla. So the Corolla is going to win this first comparison, putting our score at one to nothing. Corolla is in the lead. All right, so for the next comparison on our list, we're gonna be taking a look at the power differences. And so for this comparison, I wanted to take a look at which vehicle actually provides us the most power. So let's go ahead and start with the Civic here first. Civic does provide you with two different engine configurations. The more powerful engine is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, putting out 180 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 177 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 RPM. Zero to 60 time for that more powerful engine comes in at approximately 7.4 seconds. So like I said, there is a less powerful engine that is available for the, uh, the LX and the Sport trim levels and that zero to 60 time I think comes in at like 9.3 seconds if I remember correctly from my review but then there is the Corolla that is powered by just one engine configuration for all trim levels that's going to be a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 169 horsepower at 6600 rpm 151 pound feet of torque coming in at 4400 rpm zero to 60 time for that one slightly slower at 7.8 seconds so Civic does offer the overall more powerful engine, the quicker power plant that is going to send you to 60, but keep in mind, if you're looking at maybe a lesser expensive version of these two, it may be more beneficial if you're looking for power to go with the Corolla because that engine configuration is gonna be more powerful than the base engine in the Civic. I'll put it that way. But having said that, Civic takes this comparison. That puts us at a score of one to one. It is tied. Next on the comparison list here is the fuel economy. And so for the 2023 Civic, 31 miles per gallon in the city, 40 on the highway for the base engine, 31 in the city, 38 on the highway, then for the more powerful turbocharged engine taking regular unleaded fuel. And so for the 2023 Corolla, that is going to come in at 32 miles per gallon in the city and 41 on the highway. And again, there's only one engine configuration. So yet again, taking regular unleaded fuel. So the Corolla does inch by on this comparison giving little better mpgs that gives the point to the corolla in this comparison and that puts us at a score of two to one corolla is back in the lead so next on the comparison list here is the braking. So for the 2023 Civic, 11.1 inch ventilated front disc, 10.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 122 feet. So very impressive number there, no issues there. 2023 Corolla, that comes in at 10.8 inches ventilated in the front, 10.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 129 feet. Both of those are motor trend numbers, so it should be an equal comparison there. So the Civic is going to take the win there. It does come to a quicker stop, putting us yet again at another tie, two to two. Next on the comparison list is going to be the rear leg room. And so taking a look at the Honda Civic, that is going to come in at 37.4 inches. For reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had sitting in the back of the Civic there. Then taking a look at the Corolla, 34.8 inches, so slightly less, but for reference, yet again, even six feet tall, this is how much space I had sitting in the back there. So you could probably make it work either way, but the Civic definitely offers more rear legroom. Putting us at a score, three to two, Civic is in the lead. 
And so next on my list is going to be a cargo space comparison. And so taking a look at the Honda Civic first, 14.4 cubic feet. And if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, of course, so you can fold those rear seats down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. Taking a look at the Corolla, 13.1 cubic feet, so a little bit less there. Again, 60-40 split, you can fold the rear seats down, good bit of extra space if you needed it. But having said that, Civic does offer more space, so that puts us at a score of four to two. Civic is taking the lead. Next on the list is going to be a tech comparison. This is one that I always appreciate. Both now offer a full digital gauge cluster. Let me start by mentioning that. That is a similarity, but for the 2022 model year, the Corolla did not offer that. The Civic did, but for 2023, they now both offer a full digital gauge cluster, which is pretty darn cool. They both look pretty darn good, but anyways. Civic gives you a 9-inch color touchscreen display in terms of that center infotainment screen. Corolla gives you an 8-inch color touchscreen display, so slightly less there. But the real kicker when it comes to the tech comparison, for me at least, is going to be the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. One of them offers it, one of them does not that's going to be the Civic. The Civic offers the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, whereas the Corolla still offers Android Auto Apple CarPlay, but you got to hook it up through a USB cable. So little more wires there. So for the tech comparison, I got to give this one to the Civic for the larger screen and the wireless connectivity. That puts us at a score of five to two. Civic is in the lead. So next on the list is going to be the driving dynamics. And so this is going to be slightly subjective, but keep in mind in the back of your head, I have driven over 700 cars at this point. So I do have a little bit of experience when it comes to driving dynamics. And so the way I'm going to break this down is in terms of ride quality handling. And I'll probably throw cabin noise in there as well. But in terms of the Honda Civic, good ride quality, but excellent steering feel. So Honda usually always crushes it with their steering feel. What I mean by that is it has a heavier weight to it. So it more instantly points you in the direction that you want to go it feels like you have a little better control over the steering there's no numb or loose spots or anything like that so i was a big fan of the steering feel in the honda civic cabin noise though was pretty bad as expected in this particular segment of vehicles in the automotive industry so a good bit of road and wind noise unfortunately but let's take a look at the toyota corolla good ride quality yet again but a substantially looser steering feel, unfortunately. So it kind of drives like an SUV in terms of that loosey-goosey steering feel. Once again, though, cabin noise was pretty bad. That's to be expected, really, for all the compact cars. But anyways, got to give this one to the Civic just for the steering feel alone. That puts us at a score of 6 to 2. Civic is in the lead. So next on the list is going to be the reliability comparison and what a lot of people in this segment actually pay the most attention to. So this is going to be an extremely important deciding factor here. And by the way, this is based off of consumer reports where I got these statistics. So take a look at the Honda Civic first. They gave it a rating of average. Uh, so the way consumer reports goes, it's it's well below average, below average. Then there's average, above average and well above average. So kind of like a five tier system. So right in the middle of the line, they got average for the Civic and that was for the base engine by the way if you were to upgrade the engine to the turbocharged engine I would imagine it would be average or worse it could possibly be below average or something like that just because turbocharged engines typically are less reliable than their naturally aspirated counterparts but then taking a look at the Toyota Corolla consumer reports rated that one well above average reliability which is the very highest reliability rating given by consumer reports and that is really what Toyota has been known for and is still known for to this day is their reliable vehicle. So Corolla is gonna take the win here, putting us at a score of six to three. Civic is obviously gonna win this competition, but I do have one more comparison left that may be your deciding factor. So let's go ahead and take a look at the styling. And so this last comparison yet again is going to be somewhat subjective, but not really. I think we can all agree on this one. So Civic was the car that most recently had a kind of redesign and Honda made the Civic lower and wider, which typically is an equation for a very good looking vehicle. So to elaborate on that a little bit in terms of the height, the Civic comes in at 55.7 inches, Corolla comes in at 56.5 inches. So the Civic is one inch lower than the Toyota Corolla, which helps it look better, of course. Then taking a look at the width civic comes in at 70.9 inches corolla comes in at 70.1 inches so the civic is going to be wider as well so yet again adding to those looks and it has a very low hood line civic just honestly looks better in my opinion so overall got to give that one to the civic put it inside a score of seven to three civic is going to win my comparison competition here but 
In the end, both are very solid picks, and while the Civic may have won this competition, that doesn't necessarily mean that is the right pick for you. For example, if you favor these four things when it comes to what you're looking for in a vehicle, like more power for lower trims, better fuel economy, a lower price, and better reliability, the Corolla may actually be the best choice for you. So I'm not saying the Civic is best for everyone. So it's very possible the Corolla may be your pick, but having said that, let me know which one you guys would pick in the comments section below. I will definitely take a look. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.